Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to Christian Networking Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Pastor T. Teresa McCurry from New Beginnings Ministries. Christian Networking Entrepreneurs is a outreach of New Beginnings Ministries, and we showcase emerging entrepreneurs, small business owners, and community leaders. And remember, if you don't network, you don't work. And today our guest is none other than a very dear friend of mine, Michael Bailey from JT Bailey and Company. Michael, welcome to the show. We would shake hands, but I'm going to just wave. Well, thank we you for having me. <laughs> we're doing our social distancing. Yes, yes, yes. So, Michael, you know what? I know you have been in business for quite some time. I want to say I've been knowing you over 25 years. You have? Yeah. And we're just going to talk yeah. about... First, tell our viewing audience a little bit about yourself. Introduce yourself to the viewing audience. Look in that camera right there and introduce yourself to the viewing audience. Well, hello, everybody, and I'm Michael Bailey, representing JT Bailey & Company, which is a full-service beauty and barber supply uh, established in 1952, so we're, I would like to think, in our 68th year of being in business. Uh, it was formally started by Mr. and Mrs. Bailey, uh, who came to Cleveland from Detroit, not knowing anybody, and, uh, and established, he had a help from one guy, and uh, belief in himself. And that's how we got started, and I am the second generation. My sister and I have another partner named Dale Thomas and Iris Bailey. And uh, we have continued it through the ups and downs to this point. Amen, amen. So your mom and dad started this business in 1952. 52. And so tell us a bit about what J.T. Bailey does. What we are um, in the beauty industry is known as a full-service beauty and barber supply. And uh, that means we do everything for a hair salon or a barber shop from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. If it's to establish with equipment or all the supplies or whatever. And that's how what we basically do. And we have added on a few things as the process of time continues to. Okay. I remember years ago when I started Mimi's Hair Heaven and Spa. It was Correct. fully loaded and supplied by J.T. Bailey and Company. You have always been loyal. <laughs> Going back to, uh, I won't call the, my initial nickname for you, but you have always been loyal and always been appreciated by all of us. Yeah, and that's, that's, you know, that's what it's all about to me. When it talks, when you're in business, you want to build relationships and do business with people that, well, according to statistics, they say people do business with people that they know, like, and respect. What do you think about that? That is the truth. Uh, whether it's good and bad all of the time, uh, I love the word respect more than anything. Okay. Because I think when you respect it, you keep it. Like, you can kind of come and go sometimes, mm -hmm. but respect is something that's earned and it's hard to be taken away. Yeah, so in doing business with people that you know, like, and respect, I've always known you, liked you, and respect you as a business entrepreneur, known and liked you and respected you as something somebody that did what they said they were going to do and did it in a timely fashion and did it with excellence. Well, we've always prided ourselves on that because it's more or less that's what your word is. That's what, who you are. Mm -hmm. So if you say you're going to do it, do it. And uh, I've always prided myself in that because if I say if I'm not going to do it, I may not do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So you told us a little bit about your company. Let us know who Michael Bailey is. Give us your background, where you went to school. Well, I was, excuse me, I was uh, born in Cleveland, Ohio. I don't know if I should put the year <laughs> in. And, uh, but the business was started before I was born. Okay. I will say that far. And uh, I grew up in Cleveland. My high school, I went to Beachwood High School, and from there, I attended Howe University for two years. And one day, I was just in at the end of my sophomore year, and I just sat down and talked to my father, and I said, Daddy, you just don't know by my grades, but I'm goofing off, but you don't know it. And I said, I think I want to come home and go to work with you. And he was probably about as happy as to hear that as anybody, so he didn't have to send no more money. Okay. And, uh, and that's how I actually got started, because I never really liked the family business. Okay. And, uh, but as I got away and took, learned more about business, it, it made me want to take a, take a try at it. So you didn't finish college? I did not finish college. What were you going to college for? Business administration, okay. business management. Okay, and but you got enough in to do what you need to do. Yeah, I got enough in to do what I need to do, and, and I still read and study a lot, and I've always thought about going back, but I have one bad habit that takes up all of my time. I love to play golf. I know. I was going to say golfing. You come back in the middle of December real crispy, crunchy, because you done been down in Florida golfing all the time. But okay, so that's cool. So how 
how old were you when you stepped into the family business? I was not quite 21. I was getting ready to turn 21. And uh, so I've, I will say I've been working almost 44 years. And each year is a little different. Um, business, the one thing about business is you never know what tomorrow is going to bring sometimes. Right. And especially, say, last last several months, it probably has gotten more people who thought they knew a, knew a lot about whatever it is they did. It, it reopened the door to you, you got to change something like that. So, uh, uh, it, and my biggest joy in business really is taking what I've learned and not what I've learned, what I have learned from others who have helped me. Okay. And, uh, and to try to share that with others. And that's good that you said that others that helped me. You actually said a lot of nuggets that I want to kind of unpack and take our time. We got a whole hour for this show. So, one of the things that you talked about was one, helping others. And then the thing that you said before that was how in my words, things have changed. And one thing that I can say about this COVID-19, the beauty industry has been hitting so hard with this COVID-19. Let's talk about that and then we'll go into the next point which would be helping others. Well, that has, and even a lot of our, our established clients have, have, have really said that I've got to go reintroduce myself all over again, mm -hmm. you know, because they've lost clients for whatever reason where people are safe, feel unsafe in coming to a salon or it has just changed. You know, those, those two and a half months or two months, it changed the parameters of a lot of things pretty much for everybody. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and it's just a new challenge, but it's a challenge that you can get across. Of course. So let's talk about the COVID-19 in the beauty industry and how it's changed. After we were shut down for those two months, and then we began to open up slowly the protective gear that you have to wear, the way that people book their clients has changed because they can't book them the way they used to. For some people, like me at Alta Beauty working in a corporate salon, we were always one and done. Every once in a while you can layer some people, but for the most time it was one and done. So speak about that how people that were doing business differently have to change well I think the majority of people uh, I, the term you use was layered you know we used to like to kind of put people on top of people from time to time in our hair industry you like to see the people in there and start to count before you get finished mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but you mm -hmm. know that has changed and some people it didn't because they layered people right so that was always uh, uh, a good move so they weren't as affected as much as everybody else but I think actually to some degree it's going to also make the industry more professional. All right. And uh, uh, But that's where we have to change and upgrade ourselves in every aspect and not just the aspect of doing hair. Right. From how we deal with that customer, how we treat that customer, and, and from A to Z. Yeah. And uh, that's the biggest change that I see. Yeah. So for for um, the beauty industry, the changing way with the protective gear, because some salons still haven't opened up when it comes to facials and, and waxing and stuff like that because you're in so close proximity, proximity with a with a guest so and that has changed a lot of things and some people have almost decided not to come back into the industry and uh, especially I noticed some people at a certain age level okay that they don't want to uh, recondition themselves to the new way of how you have to do things and I understand that and I even have some customers that have an older age-based clientele and that clientele is not always comfortable in coming into a salon environment right mm -hmm. now that's true. Uh, I know at our salon we had kind of have like the first two hours where we can take people that were quote unquote at risk or quote okay. unquote um, just concerned about their health and didn't want to be exposed to the general public. And I know even some stores are doing that. Some stores, you know, like early in the morning. Cater to an age bracket. Yeah. But that's really a good thing. That's just always letting you know how concerned you are about that particular clientele. Mm -hmm. And and they do appreciate that too. Yeah, they do. All right, that's cool, Bean. So we kind of got COVID-19 out the way. The next thing is helping others. I believe that, you know, nowadays in the generation that we live in, you almost can't tell them nothing. But, you know, sometimes... I agree with that, but then also I think one of the problems in our industry from when you and I came up that we had people who helped us. Mm -hmm. I'm going to set you aside, and there's a few others, but sometimes I wonder did we do our job in helping the next generation. We kind of got my term is, is with everything out here today is that it's getting, we're getting connected with all of the technology and everything. But our industry, to me, sometimes it seems like we got connected to get disconnected mm. with each other. And, uh, and that's, I do see that in my everyday doings to a great degree. And we talk about that a lot in the offices that 
some things we've taken where we've kind of gotten away from each other. Mm -hmm. and, and that has hurt the industry to a, to, to, to a degree. Yeah, especially while it being such a personable industry. It's like, yes, we have the technology, and we use the technology to help us the best that we can, but at the same time, it's a touch-based business. You know, when I think about the beauty industry, I say that um, people in the beauty industry and doctors mm -hmm. are the only people that are licensed to touch somebody else. And that human touch means so much mm -hmm. when you're dealing with people. So when it comes to that human touch, yeah, we can do all the other stuff, but you still got to touch somebody one-on-one. -on -one. You got to touch them physically. You got to touch them mentally. You got to touch them spiritually. So that touch piece, I think that's what's missing because a lot of young people just in front of a computer all day. Yeah. You know, and yeah. then not really getting that touch, that interaction. So that's, that's very important. Well, you know, this is this is how they came up, but you know, sometimes you have to have a little bit of everything in order to be successful. Right. You know, it's it's you got to have that, and then you got to have the personal touch too. It's yeah. just like I love to call on salons, and it's almost getting where I'm getting out where my connection is getting a little lost because you can't get connected for the verses of how people do things today. Yeah. Like that. So, but it's always a challenge, and you got to figure out a way to get around it. You have to, because I remember, you know, back in the day when you talk about calling on salons, you all would come into the salon and, and do a walkthrough and, and talk to the owners and talk to the stylists and find out what products that they need and what's working for them and suggest new products. And that's like almost an art that's gone. You know, normally they send a video. So at my job, they send a video about the product and you watch the video about the product it tells you the features and the benefits of the product and then you make a decision to order that product or not the only thing that I wonder is that that's when I wonder is my time up mm. <laughs> when all of the changes come so much that if I'm not able to continue to change is my time up to some degree yeah. and because uh, I've always liked that interpersonal contact that that's how I built a relationship with you. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and you can't, you can never take that away once you build it. Yeah. Like I just think that now today is like, even now with the COVID, it made um, Zoom and mm -hmm. teleconferences and video conferences and stuff just even that much more popular. So going with the technology, not running away from the technology, but embracing it in your business. Well, you have to incorporate it, but you still got to have the personal touch right. in our industry. Mm -hmm. And and it's it's not going to make it because, see, people come to you the same way that you might deal with me mm -hmm. because of the relationship that's built. And you have to continue to build that. That's true. That's true. So with the overarching theme of this program, I want it to be more about business and being resilient in business okay. and I want the people that are watching to walk away with some tips of how can I be resilient in my business no matter what your business is so let's talk about that how do you think people can be resilient in their business well something that 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 I was taught a long time ago and it's part of the business but one of the favorite lines that was always told to me was build your reserve okay and because and also to learn to expect the unexpected because those things are going to happen to you in business that you're going to think you're fine or, but something's going to come up and normally it's going to be related to money in most cases when business is involved and, and, and you have to have a set aside just like with COVID-19 or whatever it is that happens and you may not can have only so much but whatever you have will always help because see everybody when something happened we had to lean toward can I get from here can I get from there but God has always blessed a child to have his own. Amen, amen. Yeah. So let's talk about building a reserve. So when you're building a reserve, what are some of the things that you think that viewing audience can do as it relates to building a reserve? We know have a, a saving account, but what are some of the other things that they can do as it relates to building a reserve? Well, sometimes I, I, I still believe in the stock market. Okay. And what I say that, I would never want to tell somebody what to invest in, mm -hmm. but I would just say get started. And I get asked that a lot with our younger clientele, and I just said, you know what? Over time, when you invest into something, you see that it does grow over time, even through the ups and the downs. So through the recession, through the and recession, all of that kind and of it stuff. will come back. But mm -hmm. you have to, you know, you have to stay in it and don't get scared when you see the first uh, downside right. in something. So, but that's the most important thing, and you can you can start a business fund. And okay. um, so, what would a business fund look like? Just a, a basic mutual fund that you can buy into. Okay. 
and uh, uh, it would just be in your business name, not in your personal name. Right. And just as your corporation can put something in, and, and the thing is what I always said, put it in and don't worry about it. Because <laughs> if you keep worrying about it, but just put it in and don't worry about it, and over time, a year or two will pass, and you'll say, you know what, it, it's, it's just keep doing it's it. It's growing. Because you're going to need it for tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. So a business fund, a saving account, a stock market. And I always say it's important for people to have multiple streams of income. Yeah. multiple streams of income, not just be so centric on this one thing and all of my income is coming from this one thing. Well, that's the most important thing right there, and that's what I was just saying is that uh, most people who attain something have multiple streams of income, mm -hmm. and it's not just the job. The job is what you take from to go into the other streams. Okay. It's like that, and sometimes it's almost like a philosophy that's spiritual. It's called give, save, and spend. Okay. And if you apply that into your business, it's 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 you have to give, you have to save, and then you manage from what's left, and you will do that. But most things still in business come back to practical principles, and it's just applying some principles and let time set in, and they will take care of themselves. I like that. Give some, save some, spend some. <laughs> Yeah. So that that's that's really good, and 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 when you have that as a philosophy, you keep the flow going, right? Well, the one thing that I heard that I really enjoyed. Now I heard a sermon on that, but I heard it three times. But on the third time, it finally hit home. Okay. And but what it was, you're going to be able to give more. Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to save more, and just like what you like what you said, you're going to be able to spend more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you got to follow it accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. And then my husband always said that he was like, um, he is the ultimate saver and I am the ultimate spender. So God put us both together. It so. takes, that's why it works. That, <laughs> so that is exactly why it works. Keep the flow going. There's no sense of saving all that money. But you want to enjoy yourself, you know, and, and, and give some, save some, spend some. But it's you all. said something the other day when you called me and, and you said something, not as much as it's related, but you said, my contribution to the marriage, and that just hit me when you said that. Uh -huh. And I thought that was such a beautiful thing, how you said about my contribution in our marriage. Yeah. And, uh, and I said, whoa. How beautiful it is to hear that. Yeah, so what Michael was talking about, we were talking, I work for corporate right now, and the main reason, the main, I would say the only reason I'm working for corporate right now is the benefits. So the job that I have has amazing benefits. So it's not, quote, unquote, about the money. I get a decent paycheck, but it's not about the money. It's about the benefits. So I am the reverse. You normally have people that are in corporate mm -hmm. that are dying to get out of corporate to become an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I was an entrepreneur entrepreneur my whole entire life mm -hmm. my whole entire life and then I just got into corporate for the main reason of the secure benefits because when we talked about that when you are an entrepreneur just paying into those benefits can be astronomical mm -hmm. well that's the biggest challenge and that's when I said what I said start mm -hmm. some type of mm -hmm. a fund because mm -hmm. sometimes you have to have a fund just for your future health care costs because they're going to continue to grow yeah. And with age, there's nothing that you can do that's about that. But, you know, you got to feed some things when you're young. And the biggest problem is, is that you hear the good advice, but we heed it, but we don't put it applicable to us a lot of times. Yeah. And and it really comes back to, you know, it's, you know, you heard it, you better apply it because yeah. you're going to need it one day. It, it, it's really and it's sometimes it's real simple so like um, with the multiple streams of income I had the stream of income from my job I had the stream of income from book sales I had the stream of income from speaking engagements mm -hmm. and then like now in COVID the speaking engagements are null and void mm -hmm. the book sales are dripping in but it's mm -hmm. a little something here and mm -hmm. there but thank God I still have my job mm -hmm. so you want to have those multiple streams of income so in building that reserve is so important yeah and a reserve comes in a lot of ways just like you said, it's yeah. it's it's uh, you just got to do some things that just are not what you're not used to doing when you don't have your own business. Yeah. But you know, sometimes you said something interesting how you got into corporate and like you were in this. I think everybody strives to try something that they've never done, you know, <laughs> in their lives like that, and, yeah. and and that's what's good. That's what keeps you going. It is. It is. So we kind of went over build a reserve. So put us check on there. And the next thing you said expect the unexpected so we were all not expecting covid to take over 
world, not just the United States, the world the way that it did. So it's like a mentality, a mindset, your mind has to change. And then with this whole COVID, to me it's like a spirit of fear mm -hmm. has taken over. So a lot of people are very, very fearful. If it's not just fearful of going out thinking that they're going to get COVID, fearful of what tomorrow brings, fearful of a lot of things. So it's this real heavy spirit of fear going and on. And that's right not now. abnormal. That's that's really what everybody experiences as people. Okay. It's like that. But I think as we continue to go through this, each day everybody gets a little stronger. Okay. And I know that I have as I have endured through this. And you wonder, what is tomorrow going to bring? Am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to pay them? Da -da 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 -da. But basically just keep enduring. And every day you get stronger and you see a little more light that opens yeah, up. Yeah, like, that's and, good. That's real good. So when it comes to building resilience in business, one of the things that I think about is if you have systems and processes in place, mm -hmm. it kind of helps with that resilience. You're just not flying off the seat of your pants. Um, whatever happens on Tuesday, we're going to handle that on Tuesday. And then doing different things. So let's speak about having systems and processes in place as it relates to building a resilient business well you have to be very consistent and that you do have to have but no matter when i said learn to expect the unexpected that's what's going to happen even with the systems and the planning and everything it's going to happen and really where i got that from uh i remember i was a kid and i was in my dad's office and and he wrote this sign to himself and it was in 1969 and he said learn to expect the unexpected and okay. he put the date in there so then I said something happened on to him on that date that he was not prepared for. Okay. And 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 that's something. That, but he wrote a big note and made a thing of it for mm -hmm. himself. And that's why I always got that. And I tell you, someone else who was always extremely helpful to me too, who I would like to mention, and his name is William Boyd. Okay. And uh, and of Boyd's Funeral Home. And Mr. Boyd lived till ninety nine and and almost one hundred. And after my father passed, he was someone that I would always call for guidance and to 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 get. But the thing that I enjoyed most as I talked to him, he had so much experience that I had a problem in business. And one day I was saying, who do I call? My father's not here. And then it just said, we called him Big B. Mm -hmm. And I called and I talked to him. And the funny part about the conversation was as I talked to him, I never asked, asked the question, but he gave me the answer. Mm -hmm. And then I realized what experience is. But he really told me, you already know the answer to it and you can figure it out on your own. And mm -hmm. I always admired that because he was not someone you should do it this way or do that way. And, and I said, that's what experience is all about. Yeah, that's good. That's real good. And that goes back to the other point you said, help others and help the next generation. The most successful people in our race that I have come across are those who are givers and are helpers of others, and they love to see others succeed. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's a fact. And, and that's kind of what I'm about and Bailey's is about. Mm-hmm. But that's good because when you're helping somebody else, really it, it sharpens you as well. So mm -hmm. with, if I'm giving you some information, if I'm sharing some information with you, it's sharpening that information in me as well. Well, look at our relationship. Yeah. Just take all of the time and all of the years, and I don't know how old you were when I met you, but <laughs> look at the growth I've witnessed in you. And I feel like I've been a big part of it. Yeah, And yeah. you've never kept me disconnected from yeah. you. Anytime you wanted to do something or think about doing something, you always called me. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And I've always appreciated that. And, and one reason I've always felt is I've always been very honest. Mm -hmm. See, I never said this, but I'm going to give you my honesty. And, and you will always call when something comes up, and I've always appreciated that. Yeah, yeah and I appreciate you too, Michael. It's like one thing about being in business, you want to be around like-minded individuals, mm -hmm. and you want to be around somebody that can help you, right? Correct. And, and, and as an entrepreneur, it's important. Yes, you can have your friends and you have your family members, but a lot of times your friends and your family members are not going to be your clients. Mm -hmm. So you have to be comfortable with that be you said expect the underexpected and I said be comfortable with being uncomfortable comfortable. it's yeah. more or less the same thing yeah and and uh, it, it, you're always going to learn and the one thing I always say to people is especially young entrepreneurs and some people think they know a lot and I said you just might be to your tippy toes in water what you know now <laughs> <laughs> you know because you're going to get hit one day and you're going to realize as, as, as I saw a successful business person and they were doing it for almost 50 years and they said something that rocked me, and they said, uh, I want to make sure I say this right. Uh, 
I have been doing this for so many years and they said I realize how much it is I don't know about something I do every day mm. and I said to somebody I looked up and I respected when I heard that and they said the doors always open to learn yes yeah I think that's important to be a lifelong learner mm -hmm. to be a constant student and I know that's who I am I'm a it keeps you young student. at heart too it's a, I'm a constant student because first of all there's always new and fresh stuff coming on I don't have to have the newest technology every time an iPhone come out I don't have to have to mm -hmm. get, get an I don't even know how to work all the stuff on this iPhone mm -hmm. and I've had it for I don't know how long but today living in the information age mm -hmm. there's no need to be ignorant right Correct. some things you don't know and some things you have no desire to know but at the same time some things you do need to know and and get a basic understanding of the ins and outs of whatever business you're going into well i tell you one thing that i've always liked about the hair industry is that it can keep you youthful because mm -hmm. you have to keep up with the trends, on, with the changes yeah. the trends and everything now whether you're going to do it or not and the longer you're in the business you're going to realize that it was something that was out before it's just reintroduced and done a different way yeah but yeah. you know but you have to keep i always call it it keeps you forever young i like and, uh, that <laughs> that if, if and and uh, because i have some people i have some clients in their 70s and in their 80s and if they and and they can't retire because if they have a living clientele they only want them still yeah. like that but it keeps you and it gives you something to do hairdressers never really retire mm -hmm. you know they just is there's an old bumper sticker that says they just curl up in dye -E. <laughs> <laughs> curl up and dye some hair, dye yeah. some hair. i tell my guests that all the time i'm never and I gonna don't really retire. haven't had unless there's a health issue uh -huh. and, or physically they just can't they will always keep working because you've always been independent yeah. And that's something that just an independent person in business is always a little different. They are. And this industry is just so unique. I mm -hmm. mean, I think about the beauty industry um, now working in corporate. I do people from all over the world every mm -hmm. day. I love working with various types and textures and stuff. But like you were talking about the language and, and what you learn. So when I went from entrepreneurship to corporate, corporate has a whole different language. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn the language of corporate. If you're in banking, banking has a whole different language. Mm -hmm. So you had to learn the language, language of, banking of banking when you're dealing with your finances. And well, as we were saying, not cutting you off, you have to establish a relationship when you're in business with a lawyer, a banker, and everyone else is connected, accountant especially. See, And so you have to build these relationships in order for your business to grow because you can only go so far as one individual. Mm -hmm. And and you, you can't do it all. The days of trying to do that, even with the technology and all the things that's out there, you're going to wreck yourself to death trying to do everything. And one of the keys to being successful, too, is knowing when to take off. Oh, that is so important. Let's pause and put a pin in that. It's so important to have a vacation. Mm -hmm. It's so important to de-stress. It's so important to get away and just leave everything and just clear your mind. And, and it's it's... Whatever the problem is, it might not be there when you come back, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and if it is, you'll be able to look at it in a different light. Yes. But that's something that I've learned over time and golf does that for me. But you have to have something that you just or even in the course of the day. OK, I've done enough today. And, yeah. you know, I'm not doing myself any good anymore. Burning so yourself burning out. Burning myself yeah. out. And uh, and but it's just the joy of people that does keep me going, because even the days that you just don't have it. But sometimes the interactions and the people, it it it. At the end of the day, you say, you know what? Today ended up being all right because yeah. of the interactions. And it can breathe life into you. It, it can. can totally breathe life into you when you're interacting with other people. My husband and I, we just had a conversation the other day. Um, we said we're not going to vacation this year because we don't know, you mm -hmm. know what's going on with the corona and stuff. I was like, we could just ride to Niagara Falls. We could just do something. Mm -hmm. So he's like, we're going to have a staycation, though. So we, like, created a patio out back, put some new pillows and a, another um, umbrella back there. So when we do go get some food, we just sit in the back, and that's like our little getaway. But you have to create those times. It, especially now, you have, you have to do that because you don't even know as the virus rate increases. You don't know what tomorrow's going to bring yeah. and, and what it may disclose or close back up or open back up. We, we don't know. So we're just a day to day. But I will also like to add this, that, you know, as I have grown in the spirit, it has helped me to deal with a lot of the challenges that happen in business and to realize that it ain't all on me. <laughs> <laughs> that is a wonderful thing because being Christian, networking, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, when you have your faith, your faith can help navigate you through so many things where before I would be stressed out or just be feeling anxious. And then now you can just trust God in it, mm -hmm. you know, and know that it's going to all work itself. I don't know the, all the answers, but it's going to work itself. Nobody out. knows. And I don't think we're supposed to know all mm -hmm, of the answers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it's just enough to do what we got to do for the day. 
And you know the old saying is tomorrow will take care of tomorrow, but just worry about today. Mm -hmm. And and our biggest problem is we probably always try to get in front of ourselves. Yeah, you yeah. know, and which is also getting in the way of ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and that creates it. But as I continue to grow, it it makes it a lot a lot easier to deal with everything that happens. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So when we talked about speaking the language of corporate banking, lawyers, accountants, and all that stuff, one of the things that I thought about was as an entrepreneur and as a business owner, you do have your strengths and weaknesses correct so know what they are so let's talk about that the strengths and weaknesses and know how to partner because you're only as strong as your team you know you can't do it when I said earlier you can't do it by yourself and most small businesses is we're one of many hats that we try to wear and where you're gonna grow is when you realize what you're good at and that's what you do yeah with me I know I'm good at running my mouth and being <laughs> out in the public see so then the weaknesses that I have you have to find somebody who somebody might be good with the pencil and paper a lot better than you mm -hmm. they may be the behind the scenes person right. but they're just as important as you are or anybody else that's in your business but that's the whole key is to know how to pass on what you're not good in, but to bring that person in that's good at what your weakness is. And that's so important. So when you build a team, when you look at it, you make an assessment, right? Mm -hmm. So first of all, you have to do a self-assessment. Assess yourself to know and be truthful with yourself that this is not an area that I'm strong in. And then you look at the business and you say, okay, we really need somebody who can do these numbers. We really need somebody who can post on social media. Mm -hmm. We really need somebody who can be boots on the ground and, and go out and build in customers. Mm -hmm. We really need, and then you try to figure out how, who you're going to put in those places. A lot of times as a small business owner, you'll get volunteers. Mm -hmm. So every, you don't have to pay everybody for everything. Yeah. And you know, the more that you do and you give from your heart, you will receive more type of volunteers that's in return. But if you're somebody who's, I don't like to use the word, but a little greedy about getting, <laughs> I mean, what happens, everything that you go out to do, even when you got to go to somebody, you might, they might get greedy on you, you know, and you got to be a little careful, you know, as to, uh, you know, that's why I said, you know, some things, everything doesn't have a cost to it, but you can't always get something because you're going to have to be that person that's going to need some help one day. That's Cause true. That's, we all going to get knocked down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, the key is not getting knocked down, but it's being able to get back up. Yeah, as you talk about giving, the Bible talks about um, seed, time, and harvest. Whatever mm -hmm. a man soweth, that shall he also reaps. That's the word. So if you sow seeds of giving, people are going to give back to you. Mm -hmm. If you sow seeds of greediness, people are going to be greedy around you. So whatever you sow is what you is what you're going to reap. So that's all a part of what the Bible is talking about. That so was the give, save, and spend theory. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in there. It's all in there. So anything that you want to know is already in the word as it relates to conducting your business. So that's good. Anything else you want to share? Our time is winding down. Well, I would like to say one thing. Uh, we talked about the business. Oh, I don't have to show that. Oh, you and, can. Uh, 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 with... Uh, also, for about 35 years, we've been in the disinfecting business, and we carry a product called Sterifab. And what Sterifab is, it's a uh, anything that's been sold secondhand, or even today with medical companies, when they lease out equipment, it all has to be sanitized before it goes back out. This kills everything. Okay. And it's safe even when you travel. People, you talk about going to Canada, you spray the mattresses in the hotel, so you don't bring nothing back home with you. And uh, it works. Um, it really speaks for itself, but if you have a need, there's something that's for that, and you don't have to spend that exorbitant money, and you can do it yourself. So it's called Sarah Fab. Sarah Fab. Sarah Fab. And once again, it's available at JT Bailey and Company. All right, Sarah Fab. So this is a, a sanitizing um, agent. A disinfectant, a fumigant. It does everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, all you have to do is spray it, and and. And about 15 minutes later, if something's dead on something, you can vacuum it or sweep it up, but you good to lay down. You don't have to discard anything. That's the good thing about it, see. You don't have to throw so anything out. So it's not out. anything that's harmful, no It's pesticides. not harmful, no pesticides. It's, it's, that's what's great about it. You don't have to dislodge your furniture or anything like that. Yeah, because it says it's barbicide, sterilizer, fungicide, Side. other words that I can't pronounce, deodorant, <laughs> germicide. And um, JT Bailey is located at 21010 Miles Parkway. And give them your phone number. Area code 216-587-3100. 
And that's 216-587-3100. And thank you. Yeah, so we still got about 20 more minutes. So we did our little midterm commercial. That was that right okay. there. <laughs> so let's still talk about resilience. So when you want to be resilient in business, some of the tips that you can take away. So give us some takeaway tips. How? Lo- why do you think that you, your business, your family business has been around, you said 57, 67 years? 68. 68 years. Why do you think the family business has been around for 68 years? That's resilience. Well, I don't, I really couldn't give you the answer, but okay. I guess they've done something right. But the main thing is to, I think what I've always tried on is to treat people how you want to be treated. And even the younger people today, when they ask me a question about business, and I said, the most important thing to me is, is if you're serving to someone, reverse the roles and you're the one that's being serviced. So offer the service that you feel appreciated and receiving. Mm -hmm. And from that point, then you've done your best. And then if you have a problem from that, then you might can figure it out. But treat others as as the oaths as you want to be treated. It's Mm -hmm. like you give respect, you get respect. And I think that I was even reared and brought up on that philosophy, and it continues through business. And my coworkers, we all do the same thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I mean, sometimes it's not as hard as you can make it if you just keep certain principles in place. Yeah. So just just the simple old school golden rule stuff. You know, say, not, say hi. Say thank you. Well, say today please. you'd be surprised the people that I walk into a place of business and get halfway in, I, and I have to stop and speak. And I could be anyone. They don't always know me, and then. But I think it just came from the breakdown of the household, which is a whole nother story that they just never got it. And and also you have to be a better listener. And sometimes I had to realize that I took for granted what I received that other people got for a long time, and then I realized that they never got it. So you can't sometimes hold them all the way accountable because they just didn't receive it. And like as a norm, like I knew your parents, see, mm-hmm. so I know what you got, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know. But see, some people they didn't have that, and we assume, but they just don't know. And then you have to figure out how can you go to the level that they are to reach them to start to bring them to another level where they can make it in whatever they're trying to do it. That's that's a good point because you know sometimes in business you just assume there's a lot of assuming going on. Mm-hmm. You assume that people know and they really don't know. So then when you're dealing with them, then you have to take a step back because, like you said, I can't charge you for something that you don't know. That's Correct. not fair to yeah. you. That's and, not fair. And uh, it's 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 it still comes back to how do you want to be treated? But it's it's. Uh, I think as we grow older, the thing is we just really have to become our just better listeners. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it's just like with the protests are coming on. I think they finally got people listening, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And I see it in, in, in how some people approach me the last couple of months now and, and have just asked me some questions or how did they speak to me. And I feel like they say, well, you know, I never reached out to try to feel how that person feels. Right. And th- I'm speaking of people from another race. Right. You know, right. and and I've noticed that a lot more that uh and we have we're even guilty the same way. Right. You know, it's not a one-way street. It's oh, like yeah. that, but it's and there's a purpose for why this is happening. Yeah. We may not know the end result, but it's going to go to something. Yes, that that is so true. So in listening and being conscious of your environment around you as an entrepreneur is key. Yes. So if you're not conscious and then you don't know what's going on, then you're navigating in a way that's not productive for you or your business. Mm-hmm. And one thing you have to do is, is, like you said earlier, you have to pick a few people who have been successful. You don't have to follow all of their ways, but you can nitpick and you find out what their top t- T's are. And, and you know, you, you can put that into your business. And yeah. uh, But more, if you develop yourself and if you're good in your own heart, good things will happen back to you. That's but true. that's the most important thing is, is what's in your heart is, has a great determination as to how you end up being in business and in life. That's good. So to me, when you say that, you know, you pick some people, to me, that's basically mentors, right? So it's so important to have business mentors or mentors in life, period. Because for me, I have mentors for every facet of my life. So Mm -hmm. I have people that are in ministry that I look at and I look at them as mentors. I have people that are in marriage and they have very successful marriages. I look at them as mentors. I have people in business and and mentors. So let's talk about that mentorship and, and how important it is to have those mentors. In your life. I've always liked people who who walk the walk instead of talk the walk. 
those have been the ones who I've always liked to look up if I want to find a mentor that they just don't say it, but they can also demonstrate mm -hmm. it. And to me, I think that's a greater thing is to demonstrate than to say it. Right. And and I've always appreciated people like that. And uh, uh, but then sometimes too, you have to be around some people who don't have it because you're gonna learn what not to do. That, that see, I was just gonna say that was see, my you, next point. It's, it's a two way street here, <laughs> and you got you gonna if over longevity, you are gonna have to learn how to deal with that too. Yeah. And uh, so when you're talking about mentors, to me, you have official mentors. That's official. I'm officially your mentor. I'm going to make sure that when we meet, you walk away with some things. Correct. Then you have unofficial members, somebody that I'm watching from a distance and I'm watching the way that you navigate. I'm watching the way that you do things. So you're still my mentor. Mm -hmm. It's just an unofficial, unofficial mentorship. And you probably have more people who kind of watch you that you don't realize Ooh, that they're man, even watching you. Man, you man. know, And they look up to you. But, and see, that's when I said, you know, you got to walk the walk. And see, you got people to do that. Because every now and then you come back and somebody say something that'll make you feel good and say, yeah. I didn't know I was being watched yeah. like that. You know, so it just says, keep on doing what you're doing. Yeah. In a leadership role, you're always being watched. Mm -hmm. So to me, once, you know, like, I think about like football players and stuff now. I don't want to be a mentor, but you are. Mm -hmm. When you stepped out on those on the field and little kids are watching you play football, you're a mentor. You're a role model by default. Same thing in the business. If you are in business and people are watching you navigate through business, by default, you're a role model. By default, they're going to be watching you. So whether you're going to show them what to do or you're going to show them what not, not to, to do, do, you're going to be showing them something. And that's that's a good thing. I've learned a lot from what not to do people, too. Yeah. You know, and yeah. you still have to be connected because, see, sometimes some of the greatest challenges or one of the greatest challenges you can have in business is if you pick somebody who is a what not to do and okay. try to change them. And uh, and because then you gotta you gotta put some time and effort in because you gotta figure out where they are. You gotta go there, and then you can start to bring them to someplace. But I had one guy that I did that with, and it was just a joy to me, you know, to see. And because uh, when he was with his group, I had no chance. But one on one, and then one day he came up to the office and he would start coming in. And every time he wanted to do something, he come in. He said, "Mr. Bailey." What do you think about me doing this? <laughs> and then I finally said, and they saw it in the office. I yeah. said, and I told them, I said, that was my project. Amen. Amen. And that's awesome. So mm -hmm. to me, that's like an official. Officially, you put it in your heart that you was going to help this young yeah, man. Yeah, and I picked one out because I, and I said, I'm going to see, because I saw the good in him. Uh -huh. I saw the good. I saw his talents and everything. He just had to redirect some of that other stuff back mm -hmm. out and put it over here. And, and he would be gone. Amen. And that's good because when you think about that, you know, it, in 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 the church community, we call that the, your assignment, right? Okay. So when you have somebody that's your assignment, it's just something on the inside of you that won't even let you walk away from that mm -hmm. person because that's your assignment. And when God has given you an assignment and you see the si assignment become the vision that you had of them, it really makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. So we all have various assignments that we have in life. And when you recognize that assignment, sometimes they will kick and scream and not want to do mm -hmm. what it is that you know that that they could do but then you are steadfast and you're working with them I call it sandpaper you rubbing them <laughs> down you rubbing them down and before you know it you're gonna get a smooth product and and, you know, and that's what it's all about it is is because at the end of the day at the end of the you, day you saw that that something transformed from the beginning to the end and that's what makes us all you know, but that's what makes you come back the next day. Yeah, you know, yeah. and make you sleep better that night. <laughs> Cause you feel like, okay, I've done something. something. I've, I've made a pop. I got an imprint. I have a fingerprint on this person. Mm -hmm. I've really helped navigate them to that. So nowadays, what they have now in business, anytime that you've been in business for uh, a little while, then a lot of people are coaches now, quote unquote mm -hmm. coaches. They're business coach. I had a business for ten years from 2006 to 2016, and I was a beauty entrepreneur coach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And being a beauty entrepreneur coach, what I would do is just help other beauty entrepreneurs. So how it evolved was people would come to me and ask me for different advice for different things. And it's so funny, like, when I was just doing it just because, my phone was ringing all the time. Mm -hmm. And then when I put a dollar amount on it, I call it my intellectual capital. When I started charging for my intellectual capital, the phone didn't ring as much as it used to. But it did start ringing. And then I put together some coaching programs. Because one of the things that I find in the beauty industry... And it's, it's, it's true for any industry. You have what I call hustlers, and then you have what I call official businesses. 
So my advice to people is to go ahead on and get your hustle on. But once you see you making some dollars, switch over you know, and, and, and make, make your business. business legit. So let's talk about that. I've had uh, several conversations in a in one lady tried to tell me that this was a hustle business and I said no it's a profession and it is. we never got to any type of an agreement okay and uh, so I don't even know if she's still in business or not okay. but I said you will hustle in your business uh -huh. but this is not a hustle so you're putting a word that doesn't go with professionalism at all hustle don't go with professionalism mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 in fact I, I the young lady that I mentioned your name earlier I was so that it happened on a day and I saw her later in the day and I said let me ask you one question is this a business is this business a hustle and she just backed me up because <laughs> right. they almost had me going and I said you know I guess maybe I'm so far out of tune that I didn't miss no everybody you may hustle hard at what you mm -hmm, do I mm -hmm, can understand mm -hmm. that but you know it's, it's you're never going to take your business to another level until you take some terms out of the, out, of, out, out of your business just like that and uh, and you have to realize that because you're going to get stagnant that's and you're going to get standing because those are the people and the mentality that you're going to draw and you're going to deal with. And they're not going to let you grow after a certain point. Yeah. And you have to be very careful. And that's one thing that does happen with certain type of clientele that you can have is that they may not want to see you prosper like you think they want to. Mm. You have to be very careful. That's like that. So, But back to when you said how you were the consultant and that, I felt good because I remember when you called me and got the building <laughs> over there. And I sold you a lot of stuff. You did. You know? And you you've always kept it. me when you do something. You've always kept me connected. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. So as far as I keep trying to get disconnected, I keep those around <laughs> me who can keep me somewhat connected. Yeah. yeah just like that. And, and, and I appreciate it greatly. Yeah, me too. And then with the hustle piece. So when I was doing the coaching, I had a program, and I the name of the program was Turn Your Hustle Into a Business. Mm -hmm. So that meant those were people that had been quote-unquote hustling but hadn't had anything together. So in this beauty industry, one thing that I can say that the COVID-19 did, when the monies were available mm -hmm. and people didn't have their business together, yeah. they did not qualify. Fine. You got that right. And, and a lot of people, some did, some start, some are just recently getting it, mm -hmm. this like that. But it's, but sometimes that's the purpose of something to make you to get your make business get legitimate. It right. Get it you right. You got to understand that. Get that, it right. You know, it's, 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 but I think that comes back to the part that you, most, most, most hairdressers are hairdressers. And I always define some of the females. I said, well, how come you never introduce yourself or say that you're a businesswoman? Mm-hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you always keep saying this, but you're a businesswoman. Well, and you got to yeah. deal with everything, the aspect of business that comes with being in business. Mm -hmm. And it's not just uh, just doing hair, because as you've grown in corporate, at one day, if you have a very volume, you might have to get from behind the chair to manage everything else. Mm -hmm. And people don't see that. You know, that's what you love to do or that's your passion, but it's going to grow into something that's going to take you someplace else yeah. that you got to be prepared for. You got to be prepared. So even with me being in the beauty industry for over 30 years, I went back to school. Mm -hmm. I got my bachelor's degree in business because it even when I was doing the business, when I was having my own salon, when you're meeting with people, like I said, like we talked about earlier, there's a um, a legal language. There's a, a banking language. language. There's a corporate language. So I'm meeting with the accountant and she's talking about, okay, your ROI. And I had to pause and say, so what that means? What does that mean? And then she said, return on investment. Okay. And then um, attorney said, okay, you got to make sure you have your EIN. I had to pause and say, so what that means? <laughs> so it, it quit having to pause and say, what that means? Let me go get the knowledge because I am a businesswoman and I need to carry myself as a businesswoman and have the knowledge and the confidence that it takes to move forward in that capacity. And one of the hardest things that I would tell anybody that I learned, and I always kid my accountant, and I said that the, the one thing I learned, that, but it's, it's very hard to do because you're going you're gonna to get away from it. More can't go out to what comes in. Mm. See, and if you can go, you can do that for a short period of time, but then you're going to have another problem. Yeah. But more can't keep going out than what comes in, and you have to realize that what you have to deal with and to run your business with is what comes in. Unless you have lines of credit or this, this, and then you still got to pay them back. You sure do. That's you know. called operating in the red. We don't want to operate in the red. You know. We want to operate in the black. But right? you got to, you got to realize that you can't, you more can't. But as you grow, you're gonna do that mm -hmm. here or there. You, you got, yeah, you, you got to extend lulls. yourself sometimes. Yeah. But I've also realized that there's a point sometimes in your business career that when you reach a point and you could be at your maximum growth. 
and then you're going to still grow, but you don't have the energy and the drive like you might have used to have to do that. That's when, as you made earlier about diversification, mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. when you have to be because your drive to stand behind the chair, I see that whatever is going to change. Of course. And that you mean know, now, please, I get home, I'm like, ain't I doing no 10-hour days? You know, you, you I'm over you 50 years old. So my and body see, won't now, allow me to do that. Behind COVID, you, you, you're not going to do that, but it also, the, that time being away changed you anyway. Yeah. You know, your working ability because mm -hmm. you got a little laxed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and, but the cost of living is still the same. It's, you know, it's and it's greater. going up. And so, you know, you have to, you know, like, 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 Debbie it up here or there mm -hmm. like that so but that's why you have to be smart at what you do because but that's a cycle of life mm -hmm. and I see that a lot and I try to share that with some of the young hairdressers because my dad used to tell me they said one day he said you gonna see what I'm saying yeah he said you yeah. know you're gonna hit the wall one day yeah and and you know and it happens like yeah. that and uh but the longer you can go without hitting a wall is what we said earlier too is know when to take off is how one way to be successful yes you know yes. you can be more successful in all aspects of your life mm -hmm. if you know when to take off to rejuvenate yourself right and that's, that makes a big difference that's important that's so important working smarter and not harder so before and then in business understanding that what it takes to build a business is a different mindset and plan than it takes to maintain a business. It's a different mindset mm -hmm. and plan that it takes to grow a business. And all of them take time, and you don't know enough about either one of them until you have until to get you an get experience. Until you get there. Until you get there. You can be, you know, I always like mentors and people, but I always like people that have done it too. Mm -hmm. I know people that can tell you this, tell you this. They may be the best at figures, but let me see what you, you know. You may be this, but you don't even know how to relate to people, really, mm -hmm. you know, to make things grow, yeah. just like that. Yeah. So that's why everybody needs a connection to a connection, yeah. like for our weaknesses. And um, and that's one of the main things. It's, it's important to have a network around you to make you that total package. To make the so total package. If you think that you have it all, you're wrong. You don't have it all. No matter how much you know. It's something that you don't know. No matter how knowledgeable you are, it's something that you're ignorant Well, that's to. what life is all about. You're never going to get it. Cause, but the one thing you don't want to do, mm -hmm. do don't want to do this, and I'm going to repeat this. Okay. You don't want to take what you know and take it to the grave without sharing it. Because so many people do. And I've heard older people say that. <sighs> and, and, you know, you've worked all your life. You've got something, but you didn't share it with anybody gotta else. share and the dream became dead yeah you yeah. gotta share it. you gotta share it. now with that being said it's kind of personal is there somebody to take on the company business right now the no. family business you know and that's the question that we're dealing with because nobody the nephews are not interested they don't live here and I got an unanswerable question at the moment okay so we have downsized to a degree but I still want to work a little bit yeah, yeah. you know so I'm gonna take it one day at a time, okay. and I, ain't gonna, I can't, I can't figure out tomorrow yet. Right, but right. tomorrow's gonna get its answer. Amen, amen. So ideally, you would like for somebody to come in and and keep. It's the, a great opportunity, it, it and is. you know, and I'm not gonna be somebody that's gonna be in the way neither. Mm -hmm. You know, so because I do realize there's a different generation, it's a different way of doing things, and it may be somebody else's time. Okay, you know that 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 um, you know, because I was given the realm for my time, right, and and everything, so. Uh, I can put you on good standing to get yeah, started, and yeah. that's as far as I can go. <laughs> I mean, but you and Iris, y'all have done a, a, an amazing job. Amazing job. Well, thank you. I job. appreciate it. And Dale, I can't leave Dale out. Oh, for sure. Dale for has sure. always been there, and he's my right-hand man. Yeah, so. Dale Thomas, I remember I, I first when you were servicing salons, I met you from servicing salons. And then when I moved into Mimi's Hair Having a Spa, Correct. Dale took care of us. Yeah. But you came and bought some furniture from us there, too. Yeah. I appreciate it. Every stop you've made, you've included us. Yeah, and yeah. And I appreciate it. Yeah. So my first salon was Our Hair Studio, and then the second was Mimi's Hair Heaven and Spa. And um, you guys have been integral part of all of that. Well, so. thank you for, for the connection. and But that's what it's all about is we built a relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And but it, when I say that, we've built a lifelong relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's... It goes on no matter what happens. Yeah. And it's yeah. just a phone call, and you know you got me. Amen. <laughs> I want to talk about this real quick one more time before we get ready to close out. So this is the Sterofab. Am Sterofab. I right? mm -hmm. Sterofab. So this is the disinfectant solution that JT Bailey carries. Go ahead on and give me your own commercial. It kills everything, COVID-19 and everything. But it's everything has to be so sanitized today, and people have so many different products. But this has the alcohol content that works on furniture, 
everything. I mean, you can utensils, whatever it is, and it works, and you don't have to use anything behind that but that. Yeah, so if you want to contact JT Bailey, you can give him a call at... 216-587-3100, and that's 216-587-3100. You feel and like an infomercial? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you can go visit them at J.T. Bailey and Company Incorporated, 21010 Miles Parkway. You can go to the website for that, too, J.T. Bailey CO at AOL.com. Say it again. J.T. Bailey CO at AOL.com. All right. So you can check out their website. You can give them a call. I know you, I, I know you guys have limited hours right now. So... Our yeah. hours are, well, th th with technology, th you're going to get a call back if nobody's there, but we're there every day, at least from uh, 8 to 1 o'clock. Okay, cool beans, cool beans, that's good, that's good. So, wow, this has been fun, and time just went so fast. Anything you want to share with our viewing audience for this last five minutes before we close? Well, the one thing I can just say is thank you to you, uh -huh. and I appreciate you inviting me. Um, you know, we're always just a phone call away, and, and for giving me the opportunity to, to showcase J.T. Bailey and company, and all I can say is thank you. Oh, my I hope to get the opportunity somewhere again if you need me. <laughs> Uh, that's no problem. That's my pleasure. My pleasure. I know this is totally out of your comfort zone, and, and you said, yeah, anyway. I said, oh, Michael, it's going to be easy. We're just going to sit down and chit-chat. Well, we've always, every so often, we just get together anyway. Yeah, This yeah. like that. So uh, not out of my comfort zone. I'm just in, but because of you, I'll say yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for saying yes, and thank you guys so much for tuning in today. This is Christian Networking Entrepreneurs. Christian Networking Entrepreneurs Entrepreneurs is an outreach for New Beginnings Ministries, and we showcase emerging entrepreneurs, small business owners, and community leaders. Normally, we have a networking event. We normally have a networking event three times a year, every March, June, September, and December, but since COVID-19 is happening, we've upped our shows. So now we're on KAZ Radio TV every first and third Thursday. Our new time is 2 p.m to 3 p.m. So if you're interested in being a guest on Christian Networking Entrepreneurs, please give me a call, 216-466-3801, or you can go on to the website, which is mynewbeginning.org, to the contact form, and say you want to contact Pastor T about being a guest on Christian networking entrepreneurs. So thank you guys for tuning in. Remember, if you don't network, you don't work. And we look forward to seeing you next Thursday, every first and third Thursday at 2 p.m. here at KAZ Radio TV. Have a great day. Bye-bye.